Hey guys, it's Andrew here from Simo Apps, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at using Google Sign In in our apps. If you followed our previous tutorial, this one's a lot easier to get set up and get going versus Facebook Sign In. So let's get into the code. Okay, so I've already created an Xcode project. So in terminal, just load it up, and we need to do pod in it to set up our CocoaPods file. And then once you've got that set up, open it up in your favorite text editor. Okay, so we've got our pod file open. So under pods for G sign, we're going to add the pod, Google sign in. Save your pod file, then back in your terminal, run pod install to install that. Now with that set up, we need to reload our project. We're going to open up the .exe workspace file so that we have our Google sign in CocoaPod library installed. Now with that set up, first of all, we're going to head to our app delegate. Before I start coding, all of this is documented in a Google sign in for iOS guide, just this one slight difference in the step. But other than that, it's all the same. So let's run through it. So first of all, in the Google sign in for iOS guide, we've already got CocoaPod set up. So we're going to create an OAuth client ID. So hit that button. Either create a new project or select one of your existing ones. I've already got a test Google sign in, so we'll go next, select iOS, and then it's going to ask for your bundle ID. So let's go back to our Xcode project. And then under the app project, we see our bundle identifier is simu.g sign in here. So we're going to paste that. So you want to put yours here, hit create, and it's going to configure a project. So go to download client configuration and then open that file up in your favorite text editor and we're going to use it later. Okay, so we can see we've got our file here. It's got a client ID, reverse client ID and plist version. Make sure you keep your client ID and reverse client ID secret. It will just be for your app's use only. Now going back, hit done and we need to add a URL scheme to our project. So what you do back in your project, go under the info tab, drop down the URL types, hit the add. And what you need to do in the URL schemes, you need to open up that plist file and copy in your reversed client ID. Make sure it's the reversed one. It's going to copy that, paste that in there and we're done. This is needed to add your Google sign in to your app. Once we've done that, we head on over to the next steps. Now it's got a bunch of code here, so I'm just going to run through it now in the app delegate.swift. So what you want to do, go back to the Xcode project, head on over to your app delegate.swift file. Under import UI kit, we need to import Google sign in. And we need to add a protocol called GID sign in delegate. Then in application did finish launching with options. We need to simply add GID sign in dot shared instance dot client ID and this client ID and get rid of that question mark is going to equal the client ID we had in our file here. So make sure you copy all of that and put it into your app. So that sets up our client ID and then we simply need to do GID sign in dot shared instance dot delegate equals self and we're going to get rid of the question mark for our example and then in here if we we need to add one more function and if you start typing in open you'll see this autocomplete here application open URL, fill that out, go back to the Google website documentation and you're gonna see it has it here already. So we're just gonna copy the return function to our app. And the reason we do that is quite often Swift updates and the libraries don't update their code. So we named the function ourselves just so it would autocomplete and be the correct function name. And you can see it has an error here. So typically what this is, is either some of the names of the parameters have been updated in Swift, so check that. Otherwise, some of the values have been updated. So in our case, it's quite simple. It's just 
UI application, open URL options key. And what it is here, put a dot after UI application, but between that and the open URL options key, and that's your updated code. There you go. So it's usually some simple stuff. So if you are copying code from a website for a library, I'd recommend trying to code it out yourself if you run into any problems. Usually autocomplete will tell you the correct updated method. So quite simple. Now going back to the website, um, we're going to skip this part because we are not running on iOS 8 or older. Then we need to copy this sign in function here. So once again, I'm just going to copy the actual code in that function and we'll let autocomplete fill out that function. So if we go sign in, did sign in for, paste that code. And under here, we're going to print out the full name and print out the email. Actually, I'll leave that email. I'll just do full name for now. But if you want to print out the user's email, you can. So this function is called when someone actually signs into Google. If there's an error, we'll print out the error here. Otherwise, you can get their user ID, their token, full name, given name, family name, and email. And the last function to add, if we start typing in disconnects, you can see we have the sign in disconnects here. So we'll print user has disconnected. So this is run. If we go back to the Google documentation, when a user disconnects from the app. Okay, so that's how App Deli gets set up. Now let's actually set up our sign in button. So we can see the sign in button here has some example code, but we're going to use the built in signed button because it's a lot more easier. So go over to our view controller. Under import UI kit, we're going to run import Google sign in. We're going to add a protocol to our view controller and it's going to be GID sign in. And this time it's going to be UI delegate. So make sure you have UI delegate. And then under view did load, we'll do GID sign in. And it's going to be dot shared instance dot UI delegate equals self. Get rid of that question mark. And then we'll simply do GID sign in again. Dot shared instance dot sign in silently. And what this sign in silently code does here, if is the user has already signed in before, it will sign them in in the background to the app automatically without the UI showing anything at all. So let's add the sign in button to the app. So do let's g sign in equals GID sign in button. And we're going to give it a frame of the CG rect. X zero, Y zero, width to 30 and height of 48. Then we'll make it go to the center of the screen. So I'll do G sign in dot center equals self. And then we'll go view dot add sub view and we'll add the G sign into our view. Now that's ready to go to actually sign in with Google. So quite easy. Um, so for G sign in dot center, that needs to be view dot center, not self. So the center of the current view. So let's run that app and check out our Google sign in. If you've done the Facebook sign in before, it's quite a lot easier to get Google initially set up and running. All right, so we've got our app running. We can see we have the Google sign in button here. So hit sign in. You can see our app wants to use Google to sign in. So to sign in, hit continue. We'll be redirected to the Google login screen. Then you can add your account to log in. Since I've already typed in my password before, it remembers my account. We can see it prints out my name to the console here. So remember that's from the app delegate. In this sign in, it was successful. So it's printing out my full name to the console. 
And if you haven't signed in before, it will ask for your password. Now, one thing to note about Google Sign In is if you hit the Sign In button again, it doesn't actually sign you out like the Facebook login SDK. So that can be quite frustrating. So if you want to sign a user out of the app, you, we need to add a function um, called Objective C sign out with a sender of UI button. And to sign out, you simply need to use GID sign in. Make sure we got it right here. Dot shared instance dot sign out. Just like that. It's going to stop the app from running. And before sign out, add function. There we go. So this is how you actually call the sign out function. And if you want a button to do it, I'm going to paste some code here. Uh, add sign out button. And this is what will actually sign out from your app, sort of print signing out. So first of all, we create the UI button, set the background color to red. We set the title as sign out. We set it to the center of the screen. Then we're going to add it just below the Google sign in button. Just for this example, we add the target of the view control itself. The action is what happens when we actually use this button. So it calls a selector self dot sign out, which is that sign out function here. And it happens when we touch up on the button. So when we release our tap off the button, then we add that to the screen. So if we run the app now, we'll actually see a sign out button on the screen. And that's going to call the Google ID sign in the shared instance and the sign out function. Perfect. We can see we've got our sign out button here now. So if we tap it, we can see it prints out signing out to the console. And then this will actually sign us out of Google. So you have to keep a track of if the user is signed in or not. There is documentation on there on Google and Stack Overflow to do this. I'll link it in the description below. So it's not as simple as Facebook's SDK in that part where the button tracks if you're logged in or you need to log out. But still, it's quite simple to set up. You can download the source code below. If this video helped you, be sure to subscribe, hit like and comment. See you guys next time.